I will never forget that day, as it was my 30th birthday, and I was rushing home from work to get ready to go out for a meal and have some drinks with my buddies. I recall thinking that it was typical that it was raining, and thank goodness we had the foresight to book something that was indoors, otherwise the experience would have been not great. As I was driving home, the usual route was closed due to a fallen tree, so I had to go to a less convenient way, which was typical. I had left work at about 5pm. It was now around 5.30, and I was going about another 20 minutes before I got home. As I made my way down less familiar and familiar roads, I began to get a sense of unease. It would be difficult to put my finger on exactly what it was, but something felt off. And no, it wasn't that I was lost. It's just this feeling in your stomach. I'm a stickler for routine, and so you have to understand that. I put it down to the fact that I had been thrown off my usual course, and that was just me making a nod touch. It certainly wasn't late, but I had this feeling in my bones as if I had already missed the party. It's very hard to explain. It was incredibly cold and dark along this alternative route, which didn't seem to add up with the time of day that should have also been. I can recall even thinking to myself, it's like stepping into the twilight zone. What happened next, I have no explanation for. I won't say that the car began to elevate or anything quite that obvious. And there were any flashing lights, but there was definitely something up in the sky, just out of my peripheral vision. And that's when it happened. I was no longer driving. I was still in the car, on the same stretch of road, but it was now completely dark. And when I gazed at the dash, it was 10 p.m. Somehow, I had lost four and a half hours. I looked at my cell to see if there was some sort of faulty wiring in my dashboard clock. I had over 17 missed calls and many more texts and voicemails. My friends and family were all panicking. Where was I? And the time was totally correct. It was indeed 10 p.m. I was now 90 minutes late to the restaurant, but even scarier in the blink of an eye that it had seemed to be that I'd be there Almost five hours had passed, and I had zero recollection of whatever happened. I was freezing cold. I felt like I had been running a marathon. Every muscle hurt deeply and ached. I stank of sweat, like I had been doing an intense cardio workout, or T25 with Sean T. And despite shivering, my hair was wet. And the next day, my boyfriend strongly insisted that I went to go see the doctor. My friends and family were all worried that I had experienced a seizure. They did various tests, but found out I had experienced no such seizure. I was healthy. No sign of anything wrong with blood, heart, or brain scans. All normal. Except one tiny thing. On the base of my spinal cord was a small mark. They said it was reminiscent to an injection site and it wasn't like traditional scar tissue. It was like something hot had been inserted into my skin. I have never had a shot in that particular spot before, and they couldn't explain it. I almost wonder, was I abducted? When most people experience or witness unusual things, they're usually all alone in the middle of nowhere. And that's not to say it isn't true or that it didn't happen. In fact, maybe these things that come to visit decide that it is the best time to show themselves. But the one time that I saw something amazing, I wasn't in the end of nowhere. I was right in the middle of town with a group of close friends. In fact, we just finished a late night football practice for one of our local five aside teams we were busy locking up the doors to the hall that we used when one of the lads suddenly said, What is that? We were all around 17 at this point, and probably a bunch of jokesters, as teenage boys are. 
nothing too bad, but always trying to scare each other. So, we all started thinking it was a ghost, or a werewolf, or something, and began laughing and mocking about. And then I noticed my friend, who I'll call Ben, who made the remark, looking up at the sky, with a very dead serious expression on his face. Now, this was odd. Ben was the type to make the mockery of most any situation. Out of all of us, he was the no-nonsense kind of individual. Well, no-nonsense, like he didn't believe bullcrap. So, we all take a look upward, still fully expecting to hear a ha-ha-ha moment. But there wasn't one. We all looked up at the sky, and there was something there. We'd all seen enough movies to know what a flying saucer looked like, and this was somewhat similar. It kind of reminded me of a cartoon version of what a saucer would look like. It was hovering in the sky. We all just stood there, gaping at it. But it didn't move. It wasn't like a saucer where it's rotating. It was perfectly still, not making a noise. Then, without it moving, in a sudden flash of light and a fork of lightning, it vanished instantly. We all just stood there for a few moments, gazing at one another, unsure of what to say or think. Did we see an alien spacecraft? Or was this some sort of secret military experimental craft? I have no idea, but to this day, all seven of us saw it, and we could all vouch for it. That was almost ten years ago, and we still mention it every now and then. And... None of us will say we imagined it. We've all recollected, and we all recount the same details. We still just have no idea what it was. And as much as we would like to believe it was an alien craft, it could very well possibly be a government craft. We're just not exactly sure. I'm pretty sure that I've experienced an alien abduction. In fact, possibly several... I have all the classic signs, unexplained time loss with no memory, blackouts, and unusual markings on my body. I even experience vivid night terrors of being somewhere I don't fully recognize and blurry faces looming over me. The feeling of being touched, examined, probed. I've often woken up in the morning completely and utterly drained despite seemingly having slept for a solid 12 hours. I remain lethargic, devoid of all energy for days on end, no matter how many monsters or coffee I drink. You might be thinking that it's pretty drastic to jump to the conclusion of a UFO, let alone alien abductions. Perhaps you are depressed or suffer from some sort of vitamin deficiency, or just aren't getting sufficient rest. Well... Those were the first things I did explore, many of them. I tried to think of it from a very rational perspective. I even got full blood and body tests, even questioned my sanity and mental health, drastically seeking to improve my diet, my lifestyle, and my fitness. But nothing changed. I would wake up with bruising on my arms as if I had been held down by Goliath himself. I live alone, no pets, nothing. Not even goldfish. I have multiple alarms and safety, so there was no intruder. And out of curiosity and for peace of mind, I had installed a camera in the bedroom. Around 2.53 every night, the same motion sensor would go off, and the camera would show me moving about. But no, there were no little green men, no bright lights, I didn't disappear, yet the camera showed no reason for the bruising. I had medical tests, nothing, no illnesses or diseases. The doctors couldn't explain it, said I must have very sensitive skin, and the act of turning over in bed was causing the bruising. That had never happened before, so why now? And then something else strange began happening. Just so you know, I'm a female, around 34 years old. 
I haven't dated or had a partner for quite some time. I had begun to skip my periods. Off I went to the doctors, and I was definitely not pregnant. I was sent to an OBGYN, who suggested maybe early, very early menopause. Yet there were no other symptoms. And that was when also I discovered something interesting. I was fed up and anxious and lonely, ended up drinking myself into a drunken stupor, feeling sorry for myself. I woke up the next morning feeling like death, warmed up, but no new bruising. I felt sick, had a killer headache, and was hungover. I did not feel exhausted or used. Used has been one of the best ways I can come to describe how I felt in the morning. I didn't honestly know what is happening to me, or how long it will go on for. The fact that they don't like it when I drink means I'm verging on becoming a borderline alcoholic. But at least I wake up feeling like me, rather than somebody's discarded experiment. If you know anything to help me, please tell me. I feel like I'm going crazy. I was taking my dog for a late evening walk. It was around 11 at night, and she had been whining and begging to go out. Rather than ignoring her and come down to a mess, I threw on my coat. It was cold and dark, so we headed to a nearby park, which had a grassy area just behind the house. This park wasn't blocks and blocks away. It was actually right on the corner. I was willing to have her hurry up and finish so we can get back. Of course, she began sniffing and acting really weird. The area in which she was urinating is all fenced off, and so dogs can't leave any presence. But she is scrabbling about and is very interested in the area behind the trees. And there was this really high-pitched humming noise, which kind of made my teeth hurt thinking back about it. I cannot for the life of me pinpoint where it was coming from. And then she stops, lies down, rolls over, back in full submission. And just as I think things can't get any weirder, a figure steps out from behind the tree. Now, I refer to this figure as him. To be fair, this figure could have been male or female. There is no real way to tell but for the story, I will call him him. He was tall, around eight or so feet, and he would have towered above me. He was a pale gray color, apparently completely naked, gray skin, legs and arms very long, and a very typical large bulbous head, and long oval shaped, with no mouth or nose, but huge dead black eyes. It stood there for a moment. I stood there. This thing looked at the dog and started to kind of levitate over her. That's when I think I went into fight or flight. I rushed over, shouting, grabbed my dog. Then this thing sort of floated back again and there was this bright light that engulfed me and my dog. Like when someone takes a photo and the flash goes off but much more blinding and brighter. This was like all around me, not just from one direction. There was also that high-pitched humming coming from around. Then, in one second or less than, the humming, the light, and this being were gone. We ran back home. We got out of there quickly and stayed inside. Now, I don't ever take my dog over in that direction. I don't believe in aliens or UFOs, but I cannot explain for the life of me what the heck that thing was. This story took place when I was 9 or 10 years old, so just over 20 years ago. For context, my bedroom was on the second floor with a large window above my bed, looking down over my neighbor's backyard. It was 3 or 4 in the morning at the time that this took place. I woke up in my bed to a weird anxious feeling in my stomach. While lying under the covers, 
I could hear what I thought was a very windy storm coming outside my home. After a few seconds of laying there and listening, I saw these round bright lights reflecting off the walls of my bedroom. These lights were moving in a pattern that made it seem like they were attached to something that was spinning or rotating. These lights obviously seemed to be coming from outside, and so my curiosity got the better of me. I gathered some courage, and I eventually stood up on my bed to peek outside to see exactly where these lights were coming from. What I saw next was something that I'll never forget. In my neighbor's backyard, what I saw was a flying saucer. Just saying that makes me feel crazy, but it is literally the best way I can describe what I saw to you. It wasn't huge like you would picture in a movie. It was probably only 20 feet in diameter. It seemed like the entire craft was made of the same dark steel with the exception of lights on and around most of the outer parts of the saucer, which, by the way, were super bright. Kind of like LED lights, which were not common at all during the time. So no windows from what I could see. This UFO, or whatever you want to call it, seemed to be hovering perfectly in one spot, about five to 10 feet above the ground and spinning very slowly. Everything around it was blowing around in the same direction the UFO was spinning. So I got the impression that the wind was being created by this UFO in its effort to hover in place. The hovering UFO had rounded top of what looked to be the same steel as the rest of the craft. I felt at the time like this is where this would have been if this thing had a window. The UFO wasn't completely smooth on the outside though. I could see what looked to be bolted steel on the outside, in a pattern, kind of like a wagon wheel. It only took a few moments to become truly terrified, but just as quickly as those feelings came, I felt this strange calming sensation come over me. I was still trying to make sense of what I was seeing, but now, something inside of me was telling me to go back to sleep, that this was all just a dream. It was such a strange feeling. Deep inside, I knew I was awake. I even pinched myself to make sure, but it was like my subconscious was fighting itself. Eventually, that calm part of me won. I eventually calmly laid back down and went back to sleep as if none of it had ever happened. I remember the next day checking my neighbor's backyard for anything that can confirm what I saw wasn't a dream, but there was nothing. To this day, a part of me knows I was awake and what I saw was real. I even remember the feeling of the mattress under my feet and trying to balance. I remember pinching myself hard as a way of confirming I was awake. I remember the chills down my back, but I still, another piece of me fights this and I question if I really saw anything that night. One thing for certain, I have never had anything come close to that experience in my dreams or in life again. So, do you believe in aliens? Well, after this, I do. I'm also very curious. Has anyone else had any experience that is similar? Or am I just crazy? Is it possible to have a dream this real? I don't usually share this story with people in my life because it just seems so crazy. I'm not sure if anybody would ever believe me. This encounter actually happened last year, but I found that there's a reoccurring theme. It was August of 2019, and my boyfriend and I were driving down a country back road. When I noticed three lights in the sky, I watched them as we drove closer to them, but they disappeared. We spent about 20 to 25 minutes and drove back the way we came. I noticed in the rearview mirror that the lights were back, so I told him to pull over and we both got out to watch them. I should mention here, my dad was an RAF my entire life and I'm a huge aircraft fanatic. The lights all looked to be separate from each other as they were zigzagging all over the place. They remained in close proximity of each other, but they faded in and out at different times. We watched them for about five minutes 
before they all faded completely and disappeared. My boyfriend to this day won't talk about them because he can't explain them, but I know they weren't any kind of helicopter or aeroplane. He suggested it was maybe the kids with torches, but there was no light beams from the ground. He suggested maybe we are looking at somebody playing on a hill in the distance. Again, too big, too high, and too fast. So, I downloaded the Mod UFO reports dated from 1990 to 2009, and it turns out this area is quite riff with sightings. But, I guess the interesting part is the three lights were all reported in the month of August in 1999, 2009, and we saw them again in 2019. Any thoughts? Hey guys, so I had this experience last night. I tried to get it on video, but it wouldn't show up on my phone's camera. I was looking up at the night sky at the stars, and noticed one of the stars was hauling across the sky. The light at first was a pinprick, then it got bigger and brighter, brighter than Venus usually is. Then it rapidly faded back to a pinprick, and then it was gone. I then saw two more coming into view, one after the other, in the same airspace as the first. These ones flew in a similar direction to the first one, and when I watched them closely, they appeared to bounce, like they weren't just moving in a straight line. They jerked violently and zigzagged across the sky. They moved about the equivalent of five to ten times the size of themselves at a time, if that makes any sense. Anyway, thanks in advance if anybody can shed some light on what it is that I could have been looking at. At first, I assumed a satellite, but they moved so much faster, and there were three of them. Tonight, me and my dad were looking at the sky. We were pointing out stars, airplanes, and we landed on what we thought was a satellite. We talked about how it was a satellite, but the color of the light was different than the stars, and it was moving in a line, just like a satellite would. But then we noticed the pattern moved from going in a straight line to moving back and forth rather quickly. It was moving erratically. Me, my mother and father all saw this. I am in Portland, Oregon, and we did some research, and a year ago, somebody recorded something very similar, and it was even on the news. I feel deeply unsettled after seeing this. And for the reference, this was definitely too high up to be a surveillance type thing during the protests. Has anyone seen something at all like this? Today, my friends and I were stargazing on my rooftop, and we noticed a strange flying object that we almost thought was a plane, because we had heard a loud noise that sounded similar to a plane, or something like a helicopter, maybe. My friend said it's a UFO, and when I asked out loud what it was, it instantly curved and disappeared into space. We all saw it, and couldn't believe our eyes. After that, we continued to stargaze and see what else we could see. A large cloud came out of literally nowhere. There was no wind, and it was a very clear night. The cloud moved quickly to where we currently were stargazing. It stayed for a few moments and made strange reptilian-like shapes, then disappeared really quickly. Look, aliens are real, but you already knew that. It was definitely strange, but amazing seeing a UFO with my friends. It was a glitch in the matrix, for sure. This happened at around 11.15 p.m. on September 7th, 2020, in Jacksonville, Florida. So, I want to just introduce myself quickly. My name is David, and I'm 31 years old. I make a lot of night trips around Arizona where I live, because I work in one town and live in the other. I'm not going to say exactly which towns because I'm really not comfortable with my entire identity and life just being thrown out on the internet, but I've been hearing things that I can't quite explain. 
I don't believe in the whole Area 51 and UFO stuff, aliens, all that junk. But I will say that what I've been hearing at night is very strange and just so happens to line up with other things that I've heard about this entire desert. At this point in time though, I can tell you I was heading south on the 89 in northern Arizona. This was late at night, and if you know anything about the climate or geography of the state, you know that a lot of it is vast, empty desert, and unfortunately, there's not a lot of other cars on the road at nighttime. I guess that might not be a bad thing for most people, but I enjoy the company of other vehicles on the road. It lets me know that I'm not entirely isolated and all alone. So anyway, this has been happening for the past two months. When I'm doing these late night drives, I want to say a little after midnight, I'm hearing this loud, what I can make out to be machine humming underneath the road. The first time I heard it, I thought my car was having a mechanical problem until I rolled down my window and listened even closer. There was a loud noise, or should I say a droning humming noise coming from underneath the road. It was incredibly loud and had a very eerie sound to it. It didn't exactly sound like construction machinery, but it kind of droned, kind of like an air conditioner does, where it's just kind of a hum, but it's really loud white noise. That's the best way I can describe it, but it still sounded different. I don't know, I can't really quite put my finger on it, but the vibration, whatever it was, felt like it was on the other side of the road, if that makes any sense at all. Like if the road I was driving on was a single layer, and right against the other side was this loud humming, because I could feel the vibration from my car. I don't know what it was, but it kind of creeped me out. This lasted for a few miles, and when I thought I was going crazy, I rolled down my window just to make sure, and I stuck my head out. I could feel the cool breeze, and everything around me was pretty quiet, but this loud vibration humming underneath the road just wouldn't go away. Anyway, I don't know if that has anything to do with aliens or UFOs, but I've heard stories about underground alien military bases around here. I've always just thought that was a bunch of stories that people told. But now, I'm hearing this on the road at nighttime, but only on certain times and certain hours and certain days. It's never continuous, there's no pattern, and it only seems to last for a few miles, and there's no specific spot that I go to that I hear it at. So I really don't know what it is. I've asked a few of my friends if they've ever heard it while driving along the 89, and nobody seems to know what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure I'm not having hallucinations or hearing things because, well, I'm a pretty mentally stable individual and have always been. I have no history of mental illness or none in my family, and I feel pretty sane for the most part. Like, I'm not seeing things that actually aren't there. I don't know. I can't really think of an explanation for what it is I'm hearing, and so I thought I would reach out to you since you seem to be knowledgeable on all this kinds of stuff that happens that's weird. So this is kind of hard for me to talk about, but I guess it's best I finally get something that I would consider totally off the wall, off my chest. So this was back two years ago, when I was traveling with my girlfriend. We were just heading outside of Oklahoma at the time, heading back to our home state of California. We live just outside of Sacramento with our dog, and so we were visiting some friends in New York State, and we decided to make a long road trip out of it. Anyway, I'll spare you the boring back details and just get right to what happened. So we're driving, it's nighttime out, and my girlfriend spots a really bright star, or what she thinks is a star in the sky. She nudges my shoulder and says, hey babe, look how bright that star is. And I look up from driving, and it was. It seemed like a star in the sky, but there's something off about it. It seemed unnaturally bright. And then that's when I mentioned that, are you sure that's a star? Maybe that's a plane. But it was sitting just stationary in the sky, just like a star would. And then my girlfriend gasps and points to the other area of the sky, off to the left, and she sees a large object, just like the star and just as bright, hurtling towards the other star, or what we can say were stars, but I guess in hindsight, 
They were probably just objects. I don't know. The whole thing even just feels weird to retell. Anyway, these two objects seem to collide and combine into one. My girlfriend and I start panicking and freaking out at each other. Did you see that? What the hell is that? What's going on? After the two what appeared to be stars combined into one, this object decided to come closer to us at incredible speeds. My girlfriend and I begin screaming as this light comes closer and closer to the point where it fully envelops the entire car in the brightest light. The best way I can describe it is being consumed in total light and brightness. I mean, all around you, the only thing you can see is just white. In fact, the only thing I can think of that I could properly relay this to you is really only in the movies it's ever happened. Now, I can't pinpoint a specific movie or scene, but I'm sure if you've ever seen certain movies where it shows a supernatural realm or something of that nature and everything is extremely bright and white and the only thing you could see is basically light, that's the best way to describe it. From the time these objects merged to the time that it hit our car with this light was maybe only three to five seconds. It all happened so fast, only fast enough for my girlfriend and I to barely catch what happened and began screaming. When we were enveloped in the light, it's hard to say what happened next because to be honest, I feel like her and I lost consciousness at the same time, or at least that's what I believe happened. My memory is extremely fuzzy and blurry after that. I remember being totally enveloped in the light, and then the next thing I know, her and I are waking up in my car, 207 miles north of where we were driving at that point last night. It was 1.57 in the afternoon the following day. What's eerie is her and I both regained consciousness at the same time. We're able to retell each other exactly what happened and recount the exact same events. After the light enveloped us, we both must have lost consciousness and we were parked on the side of the road, 207 miles north not even on the same road, but still in the same state of Oklahoma. At this point, we were virtually in the middle of nowhere, and had our phones not been somewhat charged, we would have no idea where we were, or what happened. Just rethinking about these events and retelling them to you sends chills down my spine. Honestly, the entire experience left me and my girlfriend terrified. Like I said, it's really hard to talk about because it's just scary. I don't know what happened to that 12 plus hours my girlfriend and I lost. We have no idea. When we woke up, there were no signs of anything out of place or wrong. It was as if we just fast forward in the future by 14 or 15 hours. Everything was the same, except all of our clocks, the daylight, our phones. Everything showed us that it was about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. There was nobody else around us either, so it's not like we could ask anybody how we got there or if anybody saw us pull in. My girlfriend and I really have no idea what happened in the meantime. Where did those 14 or 15 hours go? What happened to us? How did we get here? Well, since then, my girlfriend has told some people in her family about it, and I guess one of her family members is a huge big time alien nerd, I guess you want to say and he firmly believes that we were abducted and possibly experimented on. Now, personally, I don't believe that at all, but what happened to us, I don't know, and I can't explain how we lost 15 hours of time or what that bright light was that enveloped us and took us away into the night. I guess when you think of traditional abductions, you think of being probed, you think of being cut open and experimented on, you think of waking up in a large white room or on a metal table and seeing tall gray figures surrounding you, looking at you, and you screaming horrifically. I guess that stuff is just in the movies because we never experienced any of that. I even talked to my girlfriend about if she remembers anything after she lost consciousness or I guess fell asleep, and neither of us do. We didn't have any markings on us, nothing was wrong with our clothes. Nothing was wrong with our car. Even our gas tank stayed the exact same, so we didn't drive to that spot. We were placed there, everything. Everything remained untouched. So again, 
I don't have an answer, and I don't have an explanation. Rethinking about everything just freaks me out, because again, I have no way to really summarize what exactly happened to us. Was it an alien abduction? I don't think so. But all I can say is maybe it was some sort of supernatural event. But that still doesn't answer what we saw in the sky. Those two bright stars, or objects that looked like stars. I don't know. It's always the small things that creep back into your mind as you try to lull yourself back to sleep. Maybe that's why I'm up so late, writing this. To try and get it off my mind. Anyway, I'm here to tell the story of the only paranormal, otherworldly, extraterrestrial, unexplained experience I've ever had. I want to start off by saying I wouldn't call myself a skeptic, but I'm not gullible when it comes to UFO stories, which is my experience keeps me up sometimes. It's been about seven years or so since this happened, but I remember it, clear as a bell. It was the summer of 2012. A group of friends were gathering at my best friend's house for a pool party. To provide you with some context, we live in a small farming town that's been slowly built up over time. My best friend lived in a historic farmhouse, but there were neighbor houses right next to hers and the town hall was just across the street. While her street was lined with homes, her backyard bordered a field and you could see the tops of cars on the highway next to the field from her yard. The five or six of us all arrive and we swim for hours, having the best time a kid can hope for during their summer break. It's about 8 p.m. and the sun is finally starting to set. As we're all relaxing in the pool, somebody says, Guys, what is that? We all turn to gaze where a finger points up into the air. About 10 feet above and 30 feet out from where we are is a little orange globe about the size of a golf ball, just floating there. It lazily bobs along through the air for about 10 seconds, moving a few feet horizontally. Then, it just sort of fades out of existence, like you blinked and it wasn't there anymore at all. We were all a little freaked out, but tried to write it off as a big firefly, not wanting to get out of the pool and ruin our evening. We all continue the merriment for another hour until something else happens. It's about nine now, and the sun is set, but there's still some residual sunlight on the horizon. We aren't completely in the dark. We're splashing around when my friend says, Guys, there it is again. We turn and see another golf ball-sized orb, about the same height and distance as the last one. But this time, it's blue. It doesn't lazily bob past and forth either. The movements it made were very precise and calculated. It too moved a few feet horizontally, but in the most perfectly straight line. Then it paused midair for a couple of seconds. And then, it zoomed away. It moved so fast away from us, it left a blue light trail as it zipped down the house nearby in a straight line. We screamed. We immediately fled to the house, the whole way trying to rationalize something to explain what had happened. Truthfully, I'm tearing up typing this because this memory comes back to the forefront of my mind, from time to time of course, and it terrifies me that we have no idea what it was that floated by us that night. To start, I live in a small town in the middle of Minnesota, and I've always been convinced that extraterrestrial beings are real, but I haven't had any real personal encounters, until this happened. It was the middle of July, and about 2014, or 2015 something like that, and my dad, brother, and I had gone in our backyard to stargaze at around 10 o'clock. I know, dorky, but we liked it, and we thought it would be pretty cool. Here's some background. I'm a dude, and at the time I was 12, and had a 5C iPhone. It was a piece of garbage. This is somewhat essential to the story. 
and our backyard was an opening, surrounded by trees. So we were there for about 15 minutes, and not much happened, like maybe one or two shooting stars went by. So, I decided to watch behind while we were sitting. About five minutes goes by, and we see nothing. Then, I point out that it is so silent. My brother then got scared, and my dad said that he hadn't noticed. We were about to go back inside, but then my eyes catch something moving in the tree line. It comes into view, and we all see this thing that has to be at least 100 feet off the ground. No higher. It is silent. If I hadn't seen it, and neither of us would have, we watch as its five rotating orange lights pass beyond our view. Once it was gone, we tried to discuss what it was. During that time, another one came from the exact same spot as the first one came from. It looked identical. I told my dad to wait to see if another one comes. And sure enough, another one did. I tried to get a picture of it, but my 5C wouldn't have gotten it even if it were in the middle of the day. I was deciding if I should go through the forest and follow the UFOs, but didn't being the 12-year-old wimp that I was. We waited for any more to come, but none did, and I've regretted not going after them, because we're still not exactly sure what we saw. My dad always said they were drones, but I've seen and heard them, and they're pretty dang noisy and small for what we saw. I've not had any other encounters with UFOs before or after this. I still wonder what it could have been, but all I know is that we're not alone. This incident happened when I was 16 years old. I'm 25 now, so do the math. It was the beginning of January, and I had just received a new phone from my parents. I was, let's just say addicted to taking selfies. This new phone had a great camera, for the time it was released, and was excited to take a slew of images. Not to deter from the story, the same day my sister wanted me to go with her to the local Walmart to pick her up a new prescription glasses, and I happily went with. It was maybe 7pm when she asked me, and we both knew the eye center at Walmart will close soon, so we got in her jeep and we rushed. In my hometown, we have a plethora of back roads to get to your destination. So instinctively, she took one that would be a near straight shot to the store. At this point, it was near 7.30 p.m., and day soon turned to night. The back roads are quick, but they tend to get very desolate and creepy at night. Nonetheless, she continued to drive until we were almost about five minutes away. That's when we noticed it. Near the road, probably only 200 feet away in the distance, was this object hovering over the tree line. It was an odd shape. A Coke can, but thicker in width. It was quiet and had some lights only on the tops and bottoms of the object. Immediately, I grabbed my new phone and began to take pictures. Only the phone began to glitch. It wouldn't take any images and the few I was able to take were pitch black. I found this odd, because just hours before, I was taking pictures like there was no tomorrow, so of course it would glitch when I actually needed proof of something. After nearing 10 minutes of this thing hovering over the tree line, my sister said we still needed to pick up her glasses. So we got back in her jeep, sped towards the Walmart, still unsure what we both saw. Me and my sis just spoke about the UFO, we know what we saw, we kept it within ourselves. As soon as we got home, exhaustion hit both of us and we both just wanted to sleep. At this point, I was living with my parents and they lived deep in the country. One of those areas where everybody's phones will be roaming for signal. I luckily had a table next to my bed and if I positioned my phone correctly, it would grant me full service. That is country life for you. My sister also stayed with my folks, and we both shared a room, which I didn't mind as we both had a strong sibling bond. Late in the night, 
maybe around 2 in the morning, I woke to the vibration of my phone. I had received a text from a friend, and it read, Wake up, please. I was still in a daze to abruptly waking up, and was worried as to why she needed me to wake up. When I put my phone back down, that is when I realized that I was not able to move a single muscle in my body. It was like I was being held down, and only my eyes were able to look around. I questioned if I was enduring sleep paralysis, or if this was real. That is when I noticed my door beginning to open slowly. I tried and tried to wake my sister up, screaming, but nothing. I noticed this black figure began to come close to me, and within an instant, it was gone. I was able to move again. I didn't know what happened. I didn't blink. I didn't wake up in a jump from deep sleep. I was awake this whole time, and when I looked at my phone, my friend had never texted me in the first place. Around 1981, I was a kid in rural Montgomery County, Indiana. It was a perfectly clear day, and I was playing in the front lawn of my neighbor's house with my brother, Pat. My dad was an Indiana State Trooper at the time. I think that's relevant, because we had spent plenty of time around helicopters by that stage in our lives. I knew that these things could hover in place, made a lot of noise and wind, and I knew what they should look like. My brother and I both looked up. Over the left side of the roof of my neighbor's house, we saw two silver saucers. They were slowly rotating. We were perhaps 300 feet away. That's like what, 100 meters give or take? One was slightly higher than the other, maybe overlapping just a tad. We watched them for a few minutes, just sitting there. This was a perfectly clear sunny day. After some time, they both accelerated to a ridiculous speed toward the east. We ran inside and told my parents. Honestly, it was so insane that if my brother hadn't been there, and if my parents didn't recall us freaking out over these, I'd probably try and write it off as a dream. I've told my UFO story many times, but there's another part of it. I prefer to think this was a dream, but while I can no longer deny the existence of UFOs, this is a bit more sketchy. I was around three or four, which is where most people stop listening, but my memories from that time in my life are so extremely vivid. Much of it feels like it happened a week ago. I got a bed one night, my security blanket at my side. Much like my iPhone these days, I wouldn't be caught anywhere without that blankie. It's a tad white trashy, but it had a cigarette burn on the edge of it which for some reason I liked. I had a dream that night that was pretty vivid. I was in a large dark room. I don't recall being able to see the ceiling. I was walking along a walkway that had a railing and along the sides and all over this room were holes in the floor. I recall convincing myself that things must live down in there, although I never did see anything. In front of me and to the right, was a bright area with beings of some sort who were interested in me. I have absolutely no recollection of what they looked like. While walking toward that light, I dropped my blankie down in one of those holes on the left hand side. Yeah, as you guessed it, that bit is going to be key later on. I recall feeling humiliated as these beings examined me. Yep, even the usual things that we heard about during the so-called child abductions which I don't entirely want to spell out. I don't remember it being a very good time. I woke up the next morning, and my blanket was gone. I don't care who you are, you aren't going to forget that at any stage in your life. We looked everywhere for it. I had a history of sleepwalking, and our home was kind of small, maybe 1,500 square feet or so. I remember my parents looking everywhere for that blanket. It was just gone. It was a yellow blanket, and of course I needed a replacement. The replacement was blue, and my mom had to replace her signature cigarette burn. I'm a very skeptical person, and I really prefer to think that this was a dream. But the physical loss of a blanket, and the actual UFO sighting my brother and I experienced around that time, I don't recall if it was before or after, 
makes things really hard not to tie together. It's the weirdest thing that has happened to me, and I'm alright with you not believing any of it. I toyed with the idea of a hypnosis, and may do. One night, I was coming home from work at about 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. I live on a peninsula, so the road I was traveling down serves as the main throughout my area. As I am nearing the side street where I live, I approached a Baptist church. Immediately, I could tell there was something odd about the church, because the parking lot was dark when usually it was lit up. Instead, all I could see at first was a singular blinking red light, the kind you see on a phone tower, but the light was not blinking any ordinary fashion as it did not appear to follow any kind of pattern. I slowed down as I neared it because something hovering over the church caught my eye. The blinking red light appeared to belong to a giant airship that was hovering 150 feet above the steeple of the church. I was absolutely flabbergasted. I won't pretend to be some kind of expert on helicopters or planes, but the airship followed no traditional guidelines that I had ever seen before. I can't remember precisely what it looked like, but I can say this. It was long and cylindrical shaped. There was no identifiable front or back. The red light I mentioned earlier was in the middle. It did not have wings of any kind or rotary blades. It had large vent-like protrusions that had white light coming out of them. It made no identifiable noise and was idly hovering over the church. At some point, it began drifting to the side like a balloon. The phone I had at the time was a crappy Blackberry with a 2 megapixel camera. I tried to get to the back of my car to grab my DSLR camera, but the moment I put it in park and started to turn around, the ship began to move. In what seemed like half a second, it had shot off to the west and was gone in the blink of an eye. I still have no logical explanation for what I saw. A couple of weeks after I saw the thing, I had an extremely vivid dream in which creatures crawled in through my window and tried to take me out of my bed. They were muttering in a weird language that sounded like shrieking and clicks. I'm confident that it was only a nightmare, but it seemed significant to mention anyway. It was about four years ago. My cousin and I came out of the woods after deer hunting about 45 minutes before dusk. My uncle was also coming out of the woods at the same time. We met at his truck and just stood around talking for a while. My cousin saw it first. There were two sets of five lights, each hovering above the tree line about half a mile away. One set would stay still as the other would go down behind the trees. When it was at its lowest, you could hear a loud noise one that I can't really describe to you. After the noise and the craft would return to the height of the other craft, it was just hovering. Craft 2 would then drop down and do the same thing. This went on for a good half an hour. All of us were just stunned by what we were seeing. The weirdest part was above the crafts, high in the sky, about the level or higher than the planes fly, was a ring of lights, almost like planes circling at an airport. Eventually, the crafts just took off at an angle away from us and were gone, and the lights high in the sky were gone as well. We stopped talking about it because nobody simply believed us. This happened seven years ago on the beach in Massachusetts. Me, my brother, and my cousin, and the girl I was with at the time were taking a night walk along the beach, as we often do, to see the stars. Having very little light pollution at the edge of the continent affords us a spectacular view, much more impressive than any we could find where we live. We had found a nice little spot sheltered by rocks to sit and soak up the sights when my cousin and I spotted something off near the horizon. It was a bright light, nothing more, blinking on and off at regular intervals. My cousin and I debated what it was for a minute or two. I thought that it could have been a lighthouse because it was over land. The area we were on, on the base side of the cape which overlooks the entire inner ring of land. After surveying the surrounding lights from the building 
etc. We concluded that it was far too high in the sky to be a lighthouse. The idea was that it was an airplane crossed our minds as well, yet it was stationary. There was no noise coming from it, although we may not have been able to hear it from several miles away. We didn't debate it for too long. It wasn't that interesting after all. There was nothing about it that said it wasn't something ordinary. So my cousin and I went back to chat with my brother and my girlfriend, who had been talking a few yards away. And now for the part I cannot explain. As we're in the middle of some of our regular banter, the three of them froze, jaws to the ground, looking behind me and up. At the same time, I noticed that my back had gotten instantly warmer. Turning to follow their stunned gaze, I looked up. Behind where I was standing, and nearly 100 feet in the air, hung a luminous orb, suspended silently in the air. People with lesser powers of observation could have merely described it as a light in the sky. Yet, I am here to tell you that this was infinitely more interesting than that. It was no ordinary light. I'm willing to bet that almost anybody old enough to know the difference is able to tell you what type of light is being emitted by any device or natural phenomenon. Even when not directly facing the light, most of us would be able to discern the difference between light cast by an incandescent bulb, lamp or an LED laser, TV set, the sun, the moon, fire, you get the picture. This light had a quality that I have never seen before or since in this life. One more time, with emphasis, this light was like nothing I have ever witnessed on earth before or since. It was incredibly bright, but it didn't hurt to look right at it, even though it was nighttime. It was bluish and gave off an energy that I could feel against my face, similar to the sun's rays. It looked liquid, almost alive, much like bioluminescence. Upon looking at it, any one of you reading this, no matter how skeptical, would have been stunned into silence. All four of us certainly were, and as we stood silent, this object was suspended above us and gawked. Finally, in my excitement and confusion, lifted a finger and pointed at this sphere of light, saying, What is that? At least half a dozen times. As on cue, this object did something even harder to describe. To put it simply would be saying that it faded out, but that would be ludicrous considering just how it achieved this act. It moved silently in a straight line towards us, above our heads, all the while fading out from existence. It wasn't so simple as merely fading out like a dinner switch on the kitchen light. It wrapped the darkness of space around itself and moved and became a shadow where once it was light. Imagine taking a lit light bulb and dragging it across the surface of a pool of black paint, slowly submerging it all the while. That's the best way I can describe it. Did it phase out into another dimension? Who knows? Your guess is as good as mine. I'm just telling you what I saw. Once it had completely phased out, it did a loop and shot incredibly fast all the way back across the bay where it continued to blink on and off at regular intervals. We sat and watched this for a while, now knowing for sure it was something extraordinary. Eventually, there were two. One would blink on, then the other one off. This spectacle went on all night. I fell asleep watching it out the window. They never came so close again, and in the years we went back to the beach, we never saw anything like it again. Every time I go back, I hope to pray to witness this again promising myself that I will try and communicate instead of being completely flabbergasted. It was clear to me and the rest of us present, but it was something that was under intelligent control. It wasn't very big, but it was big enough to fit one person at least. I leave it up to you to ask questions and theorize. It was an open form, as I said. I cannot explain it without speculation and conjecture. I will say a few things that it was definitely not. It was not swamp gas, it was not a ball of lightning, it was not chain lightning, it was not a plane, a blimp, or a weather balloon, star, or a planet. It was something I have never seen before, and something I cannot explain.
This story I got is one that I am very proud of. I actually got it from talking to an old man about his experiences because he lived through a very intense UFO logical case. The year was 1977 and I was 14 years old. I used to live with my mother, dad and my sister in a house. We lived in a city in Brazil. My dad used to work as a construction worker in the city and he also had a corn farm away from there. The city was small, had a little more than 1,000 people. We used to go to the school by morning and the school was inside the church. I would go out and play with my friends in the afternoon and we would still be there playing until nighttime. There were other small villages around and the kids from these villages would join us too. It all started mid-August. Me and five of my friends were walking in a region we called the beach. The beach was a place somewhat far away from the city, surrounded by woods. We used to go there sometimes. We would start a fire and sit around it to tell each other stories. We had some dogs with us that day. All of a sudden, we started to smell something strange. It was like this weird chemical smell. The dogs then started to bark in the direction of the woods. We all looked at the tree line, trying to see something big. Me and one of my friends stood up, and we got two big sticks we would leave around the place for emergencies. The dogs got more and more agitated. We then saw some movement in the woods. The dogs ran in the direction of the movement, and before we could do anything, they disappeared in the darkness. We tried following them, but they were too fast, and their barks would get more and more distant. The noises then stopped. We kept running. We eventually found the dogs, all dead. They all had that chemical smell, and one of them had this weird transparent goo in his mouth. They also didn't have any injuries. I remember that I cried a lot that night. One of the dogs was mine, and I really liked it. Some weeks later, everything was normal. I was at my house sleeping. I woke up in the middle of the night. I heard two or three cars accelerating through the road in front of my house. I found it a bit weird, but thought nothing more of it. I went to sleep again. At morning, I got ready for school. And as soon as I opened the door, two of my friends were waiting for me. They started telling me what happened during the night. Apparently, one of the villages got attacked by some sort of light. I didn't believe them at first. However, when we went by the only clinic in town, there were more people than usual in front of it. One girl was sitting in front of the clinic, crying. We knew that girl. She would sometimes play with us, and she was from another village. We quickly went to her and asked her what happened. She then told us a story that gave me goosebumps. Apparently, everything was okay until 11 p.m. The people of her house were at the living room talking. Suddenly, they hear some commotion outside. As they went to see, there were some people pointing at the skies. So they looked up as well. She said they could see some weird lights in the sky. They were almost around and would illuminate some of the clouds near it. She got scared by it and decided to go back home. As she was getting back, a huge flash of light illuminated the village. She ran inside and hid, meanwhile, listening to people screaming outside. The flashes would continue and a buzz sound would fill the air. Then it finally stopped. She heard her dad coming inside with her mom, both in pain. After that, some of the people from the village went around to check on everyone. Her mom and dad were vomiting in the living room when the people came. They got everybody in a car and took them all to the hospital. That story scared me and my friends. We all got to school later and all of our friends looked weirded out as well. A quick question and they told us they knew about what had happened too. We had classes with the priest as normal and later we went home. After lunch, me and my friends decided to go around a bit. You could see a change in the atmosphere of town. People were scared about what happened. We then went to the beach again, me and my friends. And as we used to do, 
We stayed there until night. The moon was illuminating the sky and reflecting on the river. Then, we heard a weird noise over in the distance. Suddenly, a big shadow covers the moon. When we looked up, we couldn't move from so much fear. Right on top of us, there was this black thing, a huge, dark ellipsoid with lights underneath it. It was big and standing still on top of us. One of my friends screams and we start running into the woods. We hid ourselves in a sort of cave, unaware if this thing was really after us. We stood there for a while. After we decided it was safe, we went running into town again. As soon as we got next to it, we could hear something was wrong, as we could hear screams in the distance. As we got to it, some people were crying and screaming in the streets. I quickly ran to my house. As I got there, my dad was going out of my house holding my mom. I immediately helped him carrying my mother, who was crying in pain. We went to the hospital. When we got there, a lot more people were there too. The one medic was running side to side, trying to calm people down. In the light of the hospital, I could talk to my dad about what had happened. He said that they heard a noise outside and stayed inside in fear. People could see the light in the sky again. When the flashes started, they were inside. Apparently, a flash came from a hole on the roof and got to my mom. Where the flash hit her, there were two needle-like holes. The area where the flash just hit was marked and had black marks in it. As more people would come in, I would hear around people talking about the injuries. Apparently, the injuries were all almost exact to each other. Even the people who got totally exposed by the flashes, all they had was two needle-like holes and some black marks. When it was finally dawn, my father gathered some friends and they went to the mayor's house. It was at this point in the hospital that I heard the name for the first time. They were calling these flashes Chupa Chupa because some people reported that the light was sucking blood from them. The days passed and more places started reporting the incident. People would light big bonfires at the main square in fear of the flashes. Then the military arrived and they set up camp near the town. I had seen guns before, but nothing quite like that. They had this big anti-air gun. It was installed in the middle of the base. This didn't stop things from happening. Every day, more and more people were attacked. The feeling of hopelessness finally made a good part of the town move away. Me and my family went to a village at around 40 kilometers from the city. We had a small farm there where my dad used to grow corn. We thought we would be safe there and I had to quit school because of the whole ordeal. So my routine to the day was, I would help my dad during the day and I would hang out with some kids from the neighborhood later. Things were pretty calm for a week until one day when the lights came. I was at my home with my parents and we had to hide from the flashes under a big table in the kitchen. Some of the other families weren't so lucky and got hit by them. My dad took it upon himself to take some of the people to the town hospital. The next day, he didn't come home. I tended to the farm as usual, waiting for him to come back. Later, I got on my bicycle and went around to the other kids. We went pretty far from town. When it was almost dark, we were already going back and saw my dad's car going back to the road. He didn't stop as we were all going back together, me and the other kids. The thing is, all the kids would go home and I would have to ride another 12 minutes until I got home. It was dark already and I was alone about halfway home. Then I saw the lights in the sky and the flashes started. This time, as I was riding my bike, I didn't have a single space to hide from the flashes. As soon as the first flash hit me, I fell to the ground, paralyzed. I couldn't move nor scream, and I felt the pain of the flashes scorching my skin. When the lights stopped, I got up. Two holes were open near my neck, and I had black marks all over me. I went home, stumbling here and there from pain. That was about the last straw for my father. He got me in the car and went to the hospital with me. 
There, at least three more people were waiting, all victims of the flashes. All the family had to stay in the church while they waited for me to get treated. I spent the next day in the hospital as I had more wounds from the bicycle fall. At that night, we heard strange noises while in the hospital. It all started with a weird buzz. I recognized it from that day at the beach and started crying. Suddenly, another noise, a helicopter. It went by the city really fast. Sometime later, a loud noise. I never heard an anti-air gun before, but from the noise, I knew it was the thing firing at something. Then, everything got quiet. We went back to the farm the next day. We could see the remaining people of the town were all on edge for what happened the other day. At this point, it was at the end of February. Like a week later, the military went back to the capital. For some time in the next months, we would still see the lights, but the flashes that used to hurt us were gone. The town went back to normal then. So, I grew up in this town, and in 1989, my father passed away. I then went to live in the corn farm in the small house we had there. The house wasn't big, but it had everything I needed. I used to tend the crops during the day and made a chicken coop. One night, I was almost asleep, but suddenly, the dogs started barking outside. I had these big dogs for protection. I stood up from my bed, got my gun, and went to check outside. I could hear something moving on the cornfield. As I got outside, I started to smell something weird, a chemical smell. I stood outside in the front door, looking at the movement on the cornfield. Something then blocks the light of the moon. I look up, I see the same black shape I had seen years ago. When I look back down again, I could see a thing, a small humanoid figure, thin, had about one and a half meters tall. It had a brownish pale skin, big head, big bulgy black eyes. When I looked at it, felt a strong headache. I twisted myself and managed to get inside my house and close the door. I was so scared that I even ended up pissing myself. I then sat at the corner of the living room, gun pointed at the door. The dogs kept barking outside. I saw shadows passing in front of the window, but I refused to look at them. I stood there until I could see the light of the moon again and the smell disappeared. I got up, ran in my car, and drove all the way to my sister's house at the Capitol. I went back there to get my stuff, but I would never ever live near that region again. A friend of mine still lives there. He says that from time to time, he can still see the lights in the sky.